My name is Juan Carlos Brando. Thank you so much for joining us today in this show at noon uh, with the attorney Margaret W. Wong, who has been working on the immigration field for over 46 years. And today she's with us talking about immigration, talking about uh, immigration cases and benefits that you could get if you file something with immigration, uh, having your attorney help you to do this process. So let's welcome the attorney, Margaret W. Wong, once more time. And thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for being with us. How are you doing today? I am very good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Um, well, it, it's been interesting what, uh, what is going on right now. And uh, with all the politics and what's uh, going on at the end of this year, and I've heard that in the southern border, uh, there is a significant diminution of people trying to immigrate uh, to immigrate to the United States through the checkpoint or through the border patrol. So, uh, what do you think this is? Uh, the, is the reason for this to happen right now? Yes, I think a lot of these, we don't know if it's uh, propaganda or whatever, because I keep hearing people say, oh, now is a good time to go to America. They're letting us in. So it could be rumors. It could be is they know we are out and everybody wants to come to America since I came in the 60s. Everybody wants to come to America for the past 50 years. There's nothing new to it or even 60 years. But what's new is the is also with the Google, you know, the all these the the speed of information. Oh my gosh, my cousin went in yesterday. Everything is good. They just have to do asylum. They already have their work permit. They have a ticket to go to New York. You know, a free hotel. I would go too, right? And through the years, people who came undocumented or illegally. We don't get free hotel. We don't get free flights. We don't, you know, we come and normally we go to a cousin or we, we go to an apartment and, you know, a friend or something like that. I stay here for five days. I need to figure out where I'm going to live. So we all went through that. I went through that. I went to school and I had to go to a host family for 10 days and they came to the airport and pick us up. So we all went through the same journey, but you're right. Uh, what changed? I think it's also people are getting younger and younger. They couldn't wait in line. They also don't want to wait for their situation. Like for example, my father has a green card. My father came 20 years ago. I want to come now instead of waiting for the 25 years from the father to file for the son. You know, and also the world have changed. There's so many violence, so many, um, you know, uh, rapes and just very violent, uh, horrible countries. And when people say, oh, go to America and try your luck, man, I would go too. And I know I sound really nuts, but I think in a nutshell, that's what it is. And this is really not fair for the people who have been here for a long time, waiting their chance, you know, going to court and court getting dismissed. So it's just difficult. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Wong. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, well, allergies are coming our way. Uh, you already have like winter right there. Yes. For us, it's more like fall and uh, it's starting to get a little bit cold. Uh, and you okay. also have a young child, and that's something. Kids are always sick. Yeah. He, yeah. Mine uh, had a bad time last night. But thank God he's doing good today and he's doing awesome. So, uh, okay. Let's start with the questions from our audience today. Uh, we have a person from Latvia, which is a small country near Russia and Ukraine. And this person says, I moved to the United States. Is there any benefit that we can request due to what is happening in Ukraine? Okay. Um, very small country. I think your real question is because Ukraine is at war, Poland may be dragged in, Latvia, you're right next to all these big, and you are also the former USSR, Soviet Union. Do you get any benefits? Are you, I don't know if you're asking for free medical benefits or free visas. There's really no benefit. Latvia is a very stable, safe country. I know it's not. 
um, really there's no benefits just because another country is at war. Okay, yeah, and that's actually what the question was, that they are a very small country and they are neighbors of the uh, Russia and Ukraine and they are scared that the conflict could destroy their country too. So until that happens, you just need to wait and hopefully it's not going to uh, harm your country, but um, it could happen. But until that happens, you don't know what's going to happen with you. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. The phone number that you can call to talk to the attorney, Margaret W. Wong, is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. Ms. Wong, this is a question that is very frequent at the moment. A lot of people asking me this question, and I would like for you to give an answer. And it's about the TPS. What happens if I have a denial on my TPS request uh, will it be uh, put in removal proceedings or no. what's going to happen with me? No, TPS denial does not put you in the proceedings. The, the denial, uh, all these denials don't. Sometimes a green card of 45 denials may, but Biden is not putting people in proceedings, mostly. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And yeah, this is interesting because... Uh, well, a lot of people are applying for TPS, but some of them have removal mm -hmm. orders. So if you have a, is there something that the attorneys need to do uh, with the court? No, the, the no. it's two separate departments. Removal orders, court cases are run by ICE. There are three departments in Homeland Security. You have CIS. You have ICE, you have CBP. CBP controls all the customs, the airports, the land, the water, the, the entrance. ICE controls investigations, removals, deportations, criminal stuff. CIS controls TPS. So if you have a removal order that's controlled by ICE, removal order, that's a finality. You never appeal. You already were ordered to remove. You know you're still staying here. I, uh, TPS, as long as you have no criminal record, it should still be approved. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. This person, I don't know this comment. I am dopest from USA, INASC2. Do you understand that? Because I don't. No. There's no C2. That's a, a 6 a C1. That means that it's a material misrepresentation. So, for example, I filed for my green card. I lied about my date of birth. Or a lot of uh, ministers, priests, not lie, but they like to make themselves younger and older. It could be a 6C1 case. That means that I have material misrepresentation. Okay. Thank you so and much, Ms. Wong. I can read this. I am depend. I don't understand. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if if you can rewrite the question, uh, maybe we can have an answer for you. And I'm sorry, I, I don't get the question. I don't understand at all. Okay, so Ms. Wong, this comment is coming through. And this says, thank you, Attorney Margaret W. Wong and uh, your staff, especially to Rosa Sintron for the great job that she is doing. Uh, Last Friday, I received the renewal of my work permit for five years. Thank you so much. Uh, sincerely, Tomas Ordenes Kalel. Oh, that is so. I'll let her know. She's actually in my right hand. She's the head of the work permit extension and work permit department. She's really very good at what she does. She's been with us also a long time, so I can depend on her. And thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Uh, more questions coming in. Uh, this person says, I am an EB-5 applicant. The application was made via Hong Kong agency. I'm going to uh, paste this question on the screen so that we can read it. Um, and this person says, was made via Hong Kong agency in 2019. Um uh, I searched the website recently and I found that the U.S. attorney, okay, I will paste it here so that we can read it on the screen.
Okay, this is the question. Um, found that the U.S. lawyer and the company NCE responsible for the East EB5 project are showing as this solution. I contacted the Hong Kong agency and the staff who are responsible for the project has resigned. Right now, I need to find out. Okay, let me explain to you. There always there's a, EB5 is an interesting concept. We do a lot of EB5, but it doesn't mean it doesn't necessarily mean you need a new lawyer yet. What is EB5? EB5, the form is called 526. You are, I presume you're born in Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong EB5 is a little bit faster than China EB5 because the uh, China and India, they're very, very backed up. Vietnam sooner or later will get backed up because a lot of Vietnamese are also applying for EB5. So basically, uh, you filed in 2019, probably it's not approved yet. So I don't know if you need a new lawyer yet. The lawyer, there's two lawyers. One is the EB5 lawyer. That's the lawyer for on behalf of the business. The business lawyer take control of the EB5, the, you know, the regional, I don't know if you're direct invest or regional center. I assume like you're a regional center investment. So even if the lawyer dissolves, it doesn't mean the company dissolves. Lawyers, especially after COVID, a lot of us are burned out. A lot of us retired. A lot of us just don't want to work anymore. It's just a very difficult practice. I love it. I don't know why. I've good Mr. Juan. I have a lot of good people working with me. So I still love my job, Rosa. So um, so I don't necessarily think you need to find another lawyer. What you need to do is to really get hold of. And even though the agency people quit or the law firm quit, as long as the company who processed the EB-5 is still there, the company should have their own people who can give you a set of your EB-5 uh, filing, the 526 filing in there. That should be three things. The actual formation of the regional center, what state is it in? Number two, the actual EB-5, the 700, 790 pages of documents to process the whole financial, you know, when is the balloon payment due and stuff like that. Now, the third thing that's very important is your source of funds. Now, uh, two things may happen. They may approve it. Normally, they don't approve EB-5 unless they send you a RFV, a response for additional information or annoyed. Then you need to read what the case is about, the RFV is about or annoyed. They either ask for uh, the source of money, then you need an EB-5 lawyer to respond. But if they ask for the formation of the company and where what where did the money go? Where did the money come from? And where did the money go? Did you produce 10 workers? That really should come from the EB-5 law firm or the EB-5 regional center of people. So it depends on what they ask. Then you may want to find, because not all lawyers does EB-5, especially, and that's why most EB-5 situation, and I sort of feel bad for the clients, they always get lawyers situation at home. Hong Kong and Taiwan and India, because those people are not subject to the American processing because American lawyers like us or American SEC, uh, the security lawyers, they, pen they penalize people like us if I did something wrong. But if the lawyers are situated in Hong Kong and Taiwan and Japan and India and Singapore, then they would not be penalized because the Bar Association cannot control someone in Taiwan, you know. So um, if you want to, I certainly would love to look at the paperwork for you and see what's going on. But all listeners, since you're listening, you need your own form, you need your own set of documents. I don't care who is your lawyer. I don't care who is your EB-5 person. Whatever your lawyer did for you, get a criminal record, file EB-5, file the I-140, uh, file the I-130, file extraordinary. You should always have your own record. So when it's time to ask one lawyer for advice and that lawyer retired or quit and joined the government, then you get another lawyer. Our field is very, very emotional, very high burnout rate. A lot of people are having heart attacks, suicides. You know, it's just a difficult practice. You never, never could trust Anybody, I mean, of course, you can trust your parents, your spouse and stuff, but I always believe in you should always have your own files to start with. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Don't forget, the phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984, attorney Margaret W. Wong, with over 46 years of experience and seven offices across the country, Atlanta, Chicago, Cleveland, Columbus, Nashville, 
New York and Raleigh, North Carolina. And the phone number is, uh, of course, Cleveland, Ohio, with the um, headquarters. And the phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. Call now and make your appointment for the next day that uh, Ms. Wong can take care of your uh, questions and your case. Okay, Ms. Wong, so we have this person now. I think I understand the question a little bit more. It says, I was removed from the United States in section 212, A2AIL. Four years ago, I have two kids in the United States. Can I apply for US visit visa B1, B2? So can you tell me why you were deported instead of giving me this code? Because 212 means it's exclusion, 237 means it's land deportation. So tell me what is this A to A because I don't have my uh, paperwork here, but tell me why you were deported. Yeah, so um, meanwhile, this person is sending the question, what is the difference means why some people are removed from the United States uh, for example, in the airport, they try to come in and some of them are just, uh, their visas are canceled or revoked and they are sent back. Right. But some of them are given a bar of five years. Why, why some get the bar and why some don't get the bar? Right. That normally happens in the southern border. There's only three southern, Mexico is the only foreign country in the southern border, but the three uh, states is Arizona, Texas, and Florida. So the three states. So normally the southern border, there's three ways to remove someone or deport someone. One is expeditious removal. That's when the five-year bar. Expeditious removal means that you don't get to see the judge. You were deported after one month in jail, after two days in jail, uh, or removed. That's expeditious removal. You can always come back a second day, and sometimes they reinstate the deportation, and they'll make it like 10 or 20-year bar. So either they can reinstate the expeditious removal, or next time, maybe they're nice to you, they gave you VR, this is voluntary return, or the catch and release. That's why when people quote these new stuff, I'm like, what? You know, so... Also, removal means two things. Either I'm actually physically went back or I was still here, but I just have a final order of removal. So when the person asked the question, I was removed, I have two kids at that time. I don't know if you were actually removed. You left America and the government paid your deportation or you actually were still here, but the judge ordered you removed and you still have a case on appeal or you didn't do an appeal because you just want to hide and you didn't have money. So, so these are all things, it's actually very complicated. I try to make it easy for my listeners because I've been doing it for so long, but that's when this is a hard uh, business or practice because you really have to think of the answers very fast because people are scared. Like this morning, I, I had a phone conversation with an amazing uh, company and business located in Princeton. The founder of the business actually is a Princeton professor. They do all these AI. So whatever questions I ask them, that they say it's company secret. You know, I'm like, what? You know, and then they say, oh, we have contracts with this, with that, with and these are the AI. What do I know about AI? What do I know? But this is all secrets. You know, they have like eight patents. They have all these trademarks. And but whatever you ask them to say, we cannot discuss this because we have a contract with the Department of State. With I'm like, what? But that's how America is progressing. Um, so on the on the top line, you have people like that who wants to come to America for work with these businesses. On the other hand, if the people that came is more from India, from China, which are the, one of the, or even from Russia, these are technology. America more and more is really worried about people coming in. These people, we don't know who they are, what they do, and there's no criminal record because the world is becoming more and more AI. So the world is changing. And we really should change with it. And that's what makes the job fun, I think. And Ms. Wong, honestly, the, the, the world is is becoming scary in this thing of the AI, artificial, artificial intelligence. I've seen some videos that can make me younger or older, and they can make my voice. They can use uh, something that sounds exactly like my voice. So it's very, very dangerous out there right now. So 
uh, we just need to keep our mind knowing that uh, somebody could be using our image and our voices to do uh, something in the other side of the world. So that's why we need to be very careful with our social media and other uh, medias that we can get to. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. Don't, uh, don't forget that you can call 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Okay, this next question is, um, hi, Mrs. Wong. I studied aviation engineering. I had TPS when I studied. And then I found a job, but they cannot give me a promotion because I don't have a green card. Can I apply for maybe OPT or until I finish my master degree and maybe get a promotion? Can I file maybe for labor certification? I would file the labor cert now. You already have TPS. TPS is a status. So as long as you were never out of status and you got TPS, I presume you also have an F1. So absolutely, get use TPS, use OPT, whatever. File the perm now. You are from Venezuela, which means that you don't have a, to wait. If you only have a bachelor's degree, file EB3. If you have a master's, file EB two but see what salary you are for eb2 you need a salary maybe in the 60s or 70s but eb3 you need in the 40s or 50s depends on what state you are definitely file perm now don't wait for opt or h1b because you already have tps it's a great um, thing for tps you can also do parole so you technically don't really need an h1 or opt you do the perm now OPT, OPT, I don't think Venezuela OPT will go away. OPT, OPT, perm, which is three-step, prevailing wage, uh, advertising, prevailing wage seven months, advertising three months to six months, filing takes seven months, one and a half years. If you still have TPS, I would concurrent file the I-130, premium processing, and then do the 45, no criminal record. I think you're fine. And absent, no criminal. I don't even think you need OPT and CPT and all those H-1Bs. You have H1 and TPS, which is a really a better situation. And keep studying with your smile. And aviation is a problem because 911 is created by foreign students who became pilots. So anytime you have aviation, you have aviation control, navigation is a problem. But, you know, you do the best you can. And congratulations. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And, well, Muhammad is sending the other part of the question that you did. Political offense or crime okay. involving moral turpitude. Okay, I got it. Which is a five year, if you're married to a citizen, is three years. And I presume you're still in America, political offense. We have to be very careful, especially with the Middle East, throwing a stone. And I learned that like 20 years ago because I always thought, why couldn't you throw a stone? Throwing a stone for a lot of Middle Eastern people is not just a crime of moral turpitude. Sometimes they look at terrorism. So we have to be careful. But that's a weird offense because normally we don't, uh, we, the people, NTA, the NTA don't charge political offense. If they charge it, it's more like a, a, a persecutor. It's more like you're helping like China, one child policy. So we'll line like a hundred people out in a room and do forced abortion because it's just what nurses and doctors do. They line people up, 500 of them in one morning and we do abortion because it's one child. So, so the nurses and doctors who helped them became the persecutors. So in America, so just because Hitler made me go to war, it doesn't mean that I can still get American green cards because he made me. I didn't want to do it. So itself is a first. So maybe you're talking about perpetrator, but if it's only a CIMT, it's not that big a deal. So I don't, I don't know why they... You, so I don't know if you ordered remove. I don't know if you filed the appeal and what circuit you are. Some circuits are better on these cases than others. Sixth Circuit is not a good circuit for this kind of cases. Six is uh, Kentucky, Ohio, um, Michigan, and Tennessee. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. No a lot of experience talking to you right now. Over 46 years of experience working since 1977. Attorney Margaret W. Wong, who started with only one desk, no secretary, a small place, and now is one of the major law firms in the East and I would say in the United States of America with over uh, 4,000 uh, 4, cases per year approved, uh, which means uh, those are cases not only where permits is more and way more than that. So if you need a good advice with a good attorney, you just need to talk to the attorney, Mario W. Wong. 
with her experience of over, over 46 years plus the experience of all of the attorneys that are working with her. The phone number 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. The next question is, hi, Mrs. Wong. I got my DACA taken away because of a charge of marijuana. It was 10 years ago. Can I file for DACA again and get it back? It depends on what kind of uh, marijuana is it, is it uh, less than 30 grams and for personal possession, because sometimes they say possession and use, then maybe it's arguable, but possession and sell is absolutely no good. Possession and distribution is no good because in, in the early days, and, and now marijuana is like in Ohio, they've been legalizing it. You know, they, we just voted in Ohio. But in the early days, they just they, they divide it into distribution, sale, possession, abuse, and use, right? But nowadays, marijuana is marijuana. They don't divide it as much. There is a minor exception, marijuana less than 30 grams for personal, uh, for possession, uh, not use. It's okay. So it depends on what it is. Um, maybe get a certified judgment, enter in a copy of the transcript. In Ohio, uh, each state have their own vacate policy. Um, so you live in Colorado, so Colorado is legal now, but it's more that is the law at that time legal. And that I'm really glad you asked this question, and I had struggled with it when it first came out. So, different states now have different laws regarding legal drugs. So, even though the state is legal, the it's just like state had approved a same sex marriage years and years ago in DC and New York. So, people go there and get married same sex, but in immigration, you couldn't do it until the fall of DOMA, which is about five or six years ago or seven, eight years ago. Now we can get green cards for same-sex marriage. So it's just because the state make it legal doesn't mean federal government make it legal. Right now, the federal government. So it's sad because we have people who work in marijuana factories, marijuana legalized plants. Now they could not become a citizen because in the eyes of federal government, they could not, they could not work in these places. But in the eyes of the state, they're legal. So it's a problem. But I'm um, sorry, I, I need to ask your question. So the promise, you need to get a certified judgment entry, get a certified of the transcript, maybe go back to the state and vacate the criminal case. Now you can go back to and get back up. Because now the state law is saying it's legal. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Yeah, this is interesting. And I'm still wondering how it goes because, well, in, in my country, if I, I am arrested and paying my... Uh, my sanction for some kind of uh, felony, and then it comes a law that legalizes that, then I have to be released immediately after that law comes in. But if uh, this is a retroactive um, benefit for people that have been judged for some kind of crime, if that is not a crime anymore, then I'm, I am I need to be set free of that uh, judgment. So it's very interesting, Ms. Wong. Thank you so much for giving us uh, those details. And we have our last question for today. We only have one more minute. And it says, uh, my wife has been waiting for her approval in the Dominican Republic. Article 30 was approved, but still waiting for interview and consular process. We filed in 2021. Is it normal that it's taken so long? I am so sorry. It's, normally it takes only nine months. So we filed it, let's assume, June of 2021. She should have been here by March of 2022 or June of 2022 because of COVID, because you right, you started when COVID just started um, in the middle. So, but it should be okay because I presume you already filed the one year tax return on the DS-260. I presume you're just waiting. I would send them an email. I don't know where you live. If you live in Ohio, I would go to our Senator's office, J.D. Vance's office is Alan Kinker, um, Sherry Brown's office have two wonderful people helping them. I would go to them and ask who's your immigration aide. I would write a letter, attach the receipt notice, attach all your DS-260, the IV receipt notice, um, show them and ask them to help you push it. Uh, surprisingly, Dominican, um, uh, Haiti is gone. I mean, it's really bad. Venezuela is bad. But uh, Mexico, they do American embassies. China, they do listen to senators because senators control their budget. 
because that's a U.S. Department of State. Those are not Homeland Security. Yes, and this person says that he lives in Georgia and he's a green card holder. Oh, you only have a green card. Probably. That's different. Yeah, green card should be open because if you look at Family 2A, I just checked it, a retrogress. I think I just checked it earlier. If you look at Family 2A, you need to look at Part A. I think that's in 2019. So you filed in 2021, which means a quota not open, so she cannot come. That's why I always tell people, maybe always come on a, on a tourist visa and then file because that's a separate, because filing, you look at part B and you could have filed, but you cannot get the green card until part A is approved. And I'm very sorry because if uh, you're only a green card, I'm sorry, because those are for IRs, those are immigrant, fee, uh, immigrant visas for citizens. I don't think it will open. But if you want to check it, it's under worldwide, it's under uh, you know the, the, the part A worldwide. So you can Google what's priority day for family 2A for Dominican Republic. They know Google tells you everything now. In the olden days, we have to wait for the mail to come in from the Department of State. Uh, the person's name is Mr. Oppenheimer. He's still working there. I don't even know how old he is, but he's still giving seminars on how fast quota. He controls that quota. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for your time, for your answers. Our time is up for today, but thank you so much. I'm looking forward to see you next Wednesday to talk in the uh, Spanish show and learn more from, uh, from you and eventually get more questions from our audience. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Thank you. And for everybody who has joined us today, don't forget that you can call the phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. Attorney Margaret W. Wong with over 46 years of experience and seven offices across the United States. The phone number 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. Attorney Margaret W. Wong. Have a good lunch and see you next time.